We live in a world where generative AI technologies are progressing very smoothly and swiftly. Among them, ChatGPT and BARD have taken the top spot. These tools have completely reshaped how we browse the internet. But how do ChatGPT and BARD work? Or to be precise, how do these large language models and GPTs work? Today, we're going to explore how large language models and GPTs work in the background. What is going on under the hood with these Gen AI tools? But before we begin, and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to AI Symbiosis because we bring the latest and the greatest from the world of AI. Let's start. Recently, language models like ChatGPT and BARD came out as a net result of a revolution that took place in the artificial intelligence world. We incorporated the fascinating algorithm of LLMs to create marvels of technology like GPTs or generative pre-trained transformers. Neural networks formed the core of these language models. If so, think of these networks as virtual brains modeled after the human neural system. Similar to the operation in our brains, neural networks learn patterns and interpret data as well. Remember, everything we discuss today is applicable for both BARD and ChatGPT or the many other LLMs out there. The initial phase of training large language models involves pre-training, where the model is trained in a self-supervised manner on a large corpus to predict the next token given the input. This equips the LLM with a general understanding of grammar, syntax, and semantics allowing it to capture the relationship between words and build a strong foundation for language understanding. The pre-training phase is unsupervised and aims to train the LLM to learn how to predict the next word and produce a completion from the input data. It involves tasks like text formation, document scanning, text classification, and contextual question answering. The process of pre-training is computationally intensive and requires careful consideration of hardware requirements and distribution strategies. The neural networks that participate in this phase of training are designed using a special architecture called the transformer. This architecture helps the computer to process words in a way that it understands the context around them. This helps the computer to learn the relationships between words and the general structure of the language. The computer also creates something called embeddings, which are like code representations of words. As the computer learns, it adjusts its internal settings, which the geeks refer to as parameters, to get better at predicting what comes next in a sentence. Once this pre-training is done, the computer has gained a good understanding of language. Now it can be further trained for specific tasks, like translating languages or summarizing text. The cool part is that the knowledge it gained during the pre-training phase helps it perform further tasks better. Now most LLMs are considered generative because the content they generate is always new. Now, generating something new is completely a human trait. This is how we function. We interpret our understandings in our bespoke ways. But how was the general aspect made possible? Well, thanks to transformers. GPT remembers data from earlier training phases and generates artificial responses that closely resemble humans. It is not the mere recap of learned sentences, but rather coming up with fresh contextual lines. But wait, there's more. The attention mechanism mechanisms are the secret sauce of the GPTs. Such mechanisms enable the model to focus on individual parts of the input when producing an output. This is like shining a spotlight on the most important words or phrases in a sentence to make sure that the AI doesn't miss subtle language nuances. The fine-tuning stage sees the models become acquainted with the flow of the conversations and the flow in which humans interact with each other. Thus, the final result is a better and more aware conversationalist. This is where extensive fine-tuning comes in. Various techniques can be employed to fine-tune LLMs, such as supervised fine-tuning, reinforcement learning, and self-supervised fine-tuning. Some popular methods include parameter-efficient fine-tuning, or PEFT, and low-rank adaptation, or LORA. Now, we are not jumping into the details of these techniques because what we are trying to do over here is to give you a general know-how of how these LLMs work. The next step is to choose a model which is appropriate for the functionality you are seeking with your LLM. Popular LLMs like GPT-3 or BERT can be used as a starting point, but it's crucial to fine-tune them on domain-specific data to make them suitable for your requirements. Training the fine-tuned model on prepared data sets involves adjusting the model's weight and parameters to better fit the new data. After the fine-tuning process, the model's performance is evaluated and validated on a separate test data set to ensure its accuracy and relevance for the specific task or domain. Context recognition in AI 
AI is similar to the process of decoding the implicit signals in human language. ChatGPT and BARD have an advantage here over other models because they have pre-trained knowledge and fine-tuned conversation skills. They aren't just answering questions, they are engaging in a dialogue that adapts to the user's input and in a remarkably natural manner. Now, it's safe to affirm that language understanding and generation comprises neural networks, the powers of transformers, continuous refinement, and the art of attention mechanisms. Chat GPT and BARD on their core are a testament of how far natural language processing, or NLP, has come in the broader AI fabric. These models, resulting from the merger of LLMs and GPTs, have outgrown algorithms and are talking partners who confuse machines with the human mind. Now, at this point, we have covered almost all the basics. Now, it's time to peep in a little. Training a large language model involves the deployment of techniques like machine learning and deep learning. But before we dig further, let us first establish what both these terms mean. Machine learning is a field of study in artificial intelligence that focuses on the development and study of statistical algorithms, enabling computer systems to learn from data and perform tasks without being explicitly programmed. Deep learning at its core is a subset of machine learning that uses artificial neural networks with multiple layers for representation learning. These networks are designed to simulate the behavior of a human brain and can be used for tasks such as image and speech recognition, language translation, and decision making. Now, this whole process actually is responsible for both the generation of an outcome and the reason why a particular outcome showed up. It's a bit tricky, but to build something understanding, you can think of machine learning as the art of building a lookup table, where a certain data point carries a certain weight. If a query is presented, the deep learning mechanisms will go through these lookup tables and come up with an outcome. To be more clear, you can think of machine learning as a computer rolling a dice and recording the outcomes, and then deep learning can answer what will come up if you roll a dice in a specific setting. Let's study the case of ChatGPT, because it will automatically tell how Google managed BARD. The development process involved several key stages, initially a vast and diverse data set encompassing internet text on various subjects and writing styles was collected. This data set served as the foundation for training the model, exposing it to the nuances of human language. Subsequent processing steps ensure data quality by removing noise and maintaining a consistent format, with tokenization breaking down text into manageable units. GPT 3.5 utilized the transformer architecture, an attention-based neural network well-suited for understanding contextual relationships in natural language. Through unsupervised learning, the model was trained to predict the next word in sequences, iteratively improving through multiple training cycles. Fine-tuning allowed customization for specific tasks, and after achieving satisfactory performance, the model was deployed for user interaction via an open AI provided interface. We're all done about the working part, but BARD also presents the ability to provide real-time answers. Not only that, you can verify these results via Google search as well. So let's focus on BARD for a moment. BARD's fine-tuning is focused on the dialogue data, making sure that the dialogue feels more human than human. Attention mechanisms make it an effective touch even more. These mechanisms are as such in enchanted lanterns that only give the illumination of certain points in a conversation which need special attention. The AI in BARD makes sure it does not miss the important details and responds in line with the natural flow of human communication. Google BARD accesses real-time data through its integration with Google's large language models, such as the Gemini model, which was updated in December 2023. This integration allows BARD to process and generate text in real time, enabling it to provide up-to-date and relevant information. BARD also has the capacity to read responses aloud and retrieve images from the web, which requires significant computational resources. Unlike conventional search engines, BARD's approach to information retrieval differs in many ways. It doesn't engage in direct, real-time crawling and indexing of the web. Instead, its foundation lies in an extensive, pre-compiled dataset of text and code, continually updated, albeit not instantaneously. In terms of connectivity with Google services, it leverages BARD extensions to interface with specific Google applications such as Gmail, Apps, or Drive. This facilitates the extraction of real-time data pertinent to the user's usage and contextual needs. For a more comprehensive real-time information retrieval, BARD employs model-based inference, relying on probabilistic models. These models, encompassing pathway language models, transformers, and statistical models, operate by considering factors like the current date, trends, and users' past interactions. The analysis of the user's query taking into account context, 
its previous training and statistical inference enables BARD to predict the most relevant and helpful information sources. BARD has not fully cracked the real-time regime. BARD has not fully cracked the real-time regime and the accuracy of outcomes may vary. But one commendable aspect is that it adheres to authorized channels to access information, prioritizing the safeguarding of users' privacy. Subscribe to AI Symbiosis for more tech news. Feel free to search our earlier videos and stay tuned for further revelations in technology. It looks like the future of AI is as prolonged as it can be. Click the links popping up above and we'll catch you in a minute.